Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sari and you are watching my knitting podcast videos. And hello from Madrid. I'm actually now in Madrid in Spain. I came here the day before yesterday and I'm going to stay for another two days after this. So why I am in why am I in Madrid at the moment? First of all, I came here uh, because there's going to be the Love Yarn Festival, uh, which is hosted for the first time ever. So I'm going to be joining that. Um, this time I'm not going to be one of the teachers. I'm just going to enjoy and hang around. So I'm on my own. And also I had a great pleasure to visit the spinning mill of um, Wool Dreamers yesterday. So that was uh, one of the main reasons why I decided to come here to Madrid. My friend Laura uh, has a booth um, at the Love Yarn Festival. So she is called Laurel Knits, uh, or her yarn is called Laurel Knits, and a couple of our mutual friends also came here to help her with her booth. So I decided to come as well. And when the opportunity came to for me to visit the Wool Dreamers spinning mills at the same time, um, I just knew that I had to take that opportunity. And it was such a wonderful experience. Um, I have been to another um, yarn factory earlier, um, uh, but it, it was only for the process of um, spinning the yarn after it has been washed and carded and and so on so it was uh, the process of spinning it into uh, balls of yarn so that part of the process I have seen but I have never before seen the whole process of um, well I missed the shearing I would have wanted to see how, how the, the, the um, sheep are sheared but maybe next time um, I want to do or see that as well but I saw um, from from the point that how the wool looks like when it comes in into um, the mill um, how the different parts of it are separated and then how the wool is washed and dried and, and later spun into yarn. So I got to witness that whole process and it was quite amazing. Um, wool Dreamers um, is quite new, um, I think a couple of years old uh, yarn company. Uh, they are just still starting out, but I think they are going to have a long and amazing career um, in in front of them. Um, but it's a family-owned business uh, that has been in the same family for over a hundred years already. But before this, they have mainly produced um, wool for uh, rugs, uh, carpets. And so on and they only started making knitting yarn a few years ago and, and launched the brand Wool Dreamers at that point. And Ramon who uh, runs the Wool Dreamers um, was so nice that he uh, contacted me and asked me to visit them and, and showed me around the whole process. Um, Ramon started um, making the yarn because he wanted to um, value the, the yarn that comes from the local local sheep and all the wool dreamers yarns are actually they are sustainable they are traceable Ramon knows each farmer that uh, they buy the, the wool from so every single skein is traceable to the farms where where the uh, fiber comes from, which I think is amazing. He has also fought to pay the farmers a fair um, amount of um, money for the wool that they produce. And 
by that they are trying to um, educate the farmers also to um, boost up the quality of the wool and take, take better care of the, the animals because the, the better the animals are, the, the better is the wool is as, as well. So that was really amazing. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, in Spain we, we have around, in Merino, we have uh, close to 40 different breeds okay. of sheep. Yes. And in Wool Dreamers we, we are working now with six different breeds. And in Merino, in Spain, the, the, the Merino breed is the crane of, of Merino. But uh, in the past, we, in fact, the, in the past, the, the main economy in Spain is the wash of wool and textile. Mm. And because the Merino wool in Spain was called uh, the, the white gold. But uh, in the past, uh, we unfortunately <laughs> we export uh, the breed around the world yeah. and in Australia they improve the merino yes. the yeah. merino wool and then now uh, uh, at the same time the, the, the wool in Spain was uh, devaluated in, in Australia was uh, yes. increased yeah. the, the yeah. quality and, and the, the quality because they Care, they cared about the wool and in Spain we try to get other ways like uh, milk, meat and that devaluate the, the, the quality of wool and then now my cousin uh, and our shearer team uh, in, started uh, a, a program in order to to make the, the same way like in the past. Yes. They take uh, Australian sheep and they are they started cross with merino Spanish merino sheep in order to uh, come back yeah. uh, the the quality of of merino wool in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds nice. Yeah. Then this this sheep of Australian is around 18 microns. Okay. <laughs> We are working with farmers that want to, to, to improve this quality and we uh, lend, uh, lend him the, them the, the ramps in order to, to improve the quality. Yeah. Uh, we lend him for free because yeah. uh, for the, uh, with the, the hope for the future to take a better wood. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The bricks because uh, uh, Merino is very popular around the world, but uh, we want to, to help the, the local breeds and the local farmers that have uh, another kind of breeds that normally they threw away the, the wool. And we try to revaluate this because I don't, know, I don't think that the wool is, uh, some wool is worse than others. Uh, I think different woods is for different products. Yes, and they have different <laughs> qualities, yes. yes, yeah, and but different appearance. It's a, a biodegradable uh, fiber, 100% uh, biodegradable. You threw away uh, a jacket of yeah. wool and they, uh, 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 they can use wool for compost, for, for the, and it's a, a magic fiber. Yes, <laughs> yeah. You uh, in, in the the wool is the only fiber that in, in its uh, life during the year uh, capture carbon and make uh, because the the sheep uh, fertilize inside the soil yeah. and the soil capture carbon. Yeah. And it's uh, nowadays that uh, we want to improve the the pollution, the, it's not, uh, it, it's not, uh, there is no sense to use only in the, in the fashion, wool is only 2%. The rest yeah. is uh, other fibers and the main is acrylic fiber. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's so sad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then uh, here we qualify the wool. Yeah. Uh, we receive the wool uh, from the farms like this box. Uh, you have here the fleeces. One sheep. <laughs> You see the, the legs and and for Jan to use only only the back. The yeah. center. Yeah, yeah. And the this is usually used for mattress. Felt, healthy yeah. uh, products, and it depends on the, the quality. If the sheep lives many times inside the farm with the humidity and uh, with the other sheep, mm -hmm. you take this kind. This is a felted. Yes. Yeah. And you can use this for yarn. Then uh, you have to, for yarn, like uh, with qualities, with quite high qualities, we only use for wool dreamers uh, extensive uh, uh, farms that live outside, not inside, because the, the wool is more, uh, is better than the, the Sheep that lives inside a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. And then you have here to, to grade in different parts. The big uh, mountain, uh, the bigger mountain is uh, uh, the quality A. A, A, A yes. <laughs> and this is yellow felted parts, this is marks, and also this is yellow, uh, this is more yellow, and this is felted parts, but not yellow, and this is uh, some black, okay. you have to, in the presence of the brick, you are uh, classified, you have to classify in different uh, grades. Yeah. Ramon showed me um, how the wool looks like when it comes in um, from the farms to um, the um, bushing plant and he showed me how the, the wool is separated and if I remember correctly he said that only 25% of the wool that comes in um, is turned into yarn. So only the very best quality uh, of the wool, so the back of the sheep, um, which is not dirty, uh, is used for, for yarn. Other parts are going still for carpets and, and um, they also use the very dirtiest bits to make pellets that they put back into the ground to fertilize, which I think is really amazing. So nothing goes to waste. The, the machine to open the fleece. We are now uh, scouring a semi-yellow wool. It's not a white, white wool. It's uh, not a, a strong yellow. Because a strong yellow would be difficult to dye. Yeah. Open the 
machine is close to for 100 years. Okay. <laughs> Still working. 80. <laughs> recycle the washing water so the wool is washed um, five times it goes through this um, line of washing and when the, the first wash uh, water is too dirty they throw that away but they take uh, water from the, the cleaner washes to the dirtier and put new water for the, the cleanest ones so they are trying to reduce the amount of water that is used for this washing process. Uh, the washing process takes away the dirt, uh, also lanolin from the from the yarn, and, and makes it better for for um, spinning and so on. After that, um, they are drying the yarn, and they actually have two different drying machines, um, which. Again, there's um, a lot of stuff that, um, like dirt and a bit of hay and hair that is too short is falling off at that process as well. And um, what comes out is this um, softest, fluffiest yarn. It was so amazing. There was like this huge pile of, of um, the fluffy yarn. Um, it looked like something that I really wanted to fall into. And um, that's now the ready material that can be spun into yarn. So what they do next is they, they, they pack the yarn up and after that it's um, moved to their other um, factory, which is the spinning mill. So they take it to another place in the same village and then they start the spinning process. And for the spinning process, um, first the wool is carded, so that means that it's kind of like combed in, in a machine that makes the fibers go in the same, same direction, because otherwise they are like very curly lumps of, of fur, so it has to be carded in, in the same um, direction. And after that, it is uh, put into like these little discs. And this machine is uh, rough yeah. to make a, a round, a, yeah. a mantelo. <laughs> where the manche lopi comes from. So Raman had this idea after seeing the plotulopi 
uh, skeins he wanted to create similar but with with Spanish uh, sheep uh, wool something that is softer than the Icelandic wool so he actually uses um, manchego sheep um, wool for the the manchelopis and I'm so bummed that I didn't get any of that um, from uh, Wool Dreamers. I really need to get that next time. Um, I have never needed with Lobby actually, uh, not with with um, Plotu Lobby or anything else uh, similar like unspun yarn. Um, I think. Um, Kind of like a bit intimidated by it because um, you can't really pull it, it it breaks but when you have you have knitted it into a fabric then of course the the stitches will hold it so that it doesn't break as easily and i was told that it results in this um, lightest um, fabric so super lightweight um, airy for example, if you use it for a sweater, super airy sweater, uh, a little bit a lot of um, like flow, flowiness, or if you use it, for example, for for a shawl, so you get um, super lightweight but still super warm um, shawl. So I kind of wish um, I had bought that as well. But yeah, next time. Um, but if you don't want to use the um, yarn or, or the fiber for manchelopi, the next thing that happens to the yarn is that it's started to be um, spinned. So the fibers are being spinned and if you have two ply, then you have two bits of um, the manchelopi um, spun together so that they create like this um, chain. And four, four ply is of course four uh, different um, plies of it and so on. Um, and after the spinning process the next thing that they do is uh, put the yarn in hanks and if it's going to be an undyed colorway then the yarn will be ready to um, be sold as it is so it will get its labels and so on. But for the dyed colorways they will be sent to another company who does the dyeing for them and putting the labels on and, and for example the Muta yarn is spun into these balls at, at that place. The thing I love about this whole knitting community, it's not just the knitters but it's also the people who dye the yarn, it's the people who spin the yarn, the people who um, source the wool so um, seeing the other side the thing not, not not the knitting not the designing but seeing where the yarn where the wool that I use comes from it really gives me a new appreciation for for the material itself um, for the welfare of the animals um, and farmers of course for environment uh, it gives a whole new perspective to that whole thing and also seeing all the steps that it takes from sheep to become a, a hank of yarn um, there's so such a lot of work so many people have already worked with with this wool before it came this uh, little hank of yarn that I'm now holding in my hand and I often myself I think that when I, uh, I start to knit with it and when I start to design with it that's where the process starts but it doesn't start there it has already started a long time ago um, I'm just one one step in the process so it really gives you a, a whole new appreciation for for the yarn that we use to see how how it's done 
and how it's done well in that way that everybody benefits from it. And I think that is such an important thing. And of course, you want to see the yarns that I um, got from Wool Dreamers. I wish I could show you the whole range, but um, I have one uh, sweater yarn, one shawl yarn, and also one hat yarn here with me. Um, I came to Madrid with only my um, hand package, so I don't have anything for the plane to um, go into the trunk of the plane. I don't know what it's called, but anyway, the, the big, big bag, I only have my carry-on. Uh, so that limits me to how much yarn I can bring with me home, but um, I really hope I, I had uh, some mantle of it to, to show to you, but I'm sure to um, get it soon and then I can, I can show you more how it looks like and I really want to try it out for myself, but this is the yarn that I already fell in love with uh, when I was in Barcelona. Um, and this is the Wool Dreamers um, De Hezala Rinconada and this is um, the undyed colorway um, called Niebla. So this is really beautiful and it says here on the um, etiquette that uh, comes from uh, Maria Pia's sheep. So it says here who the farmer is. And this is something, it's a DK weight yarn. Uh, it has 230 grams per 100, uh, 230 meters per 100 grams. Um, so it's a DK weight yarn and I'm planning to use it for a cable sweater. It looks a bit bluish, at least here on my screen, but uh, it's a really beautiful, quite similar to, to this uh, color that I'm using at the moment, this sweater. So I have a sweater worth of these, even though I'm just showing one skein to you. And then I have their Merino Yak yarn as well. And this only came in two colors, so it was this one and one lighter one, so this is also an undyed color and it has 165 meters per 50 grams. Um, it's Gris Oscuro Natural, uh, it's called uh, um, colorway, uh, it's 82% of Merino wool and uh, 18 percent of um, yuck it's sustainable sustainable fibers and this is merino yuck yarn and i have a couple of more of these um, over there in my bag and these are going to become a little shawl already planning um, I have an idea already in my head what I'm going to what kind of shawl I'm going to make them uh, into and like I said sport weight super beautiful and I love the undyed colorway and then I have the Mota here you can see this is their bestseller yarn and it's um Worsted or DK, DK weight 230 meters per 100 grams, and it's um, merino and, and Moncheca sheep wool. And this is a uh, colorway uh, 463G. See it over there. Um, I love this red. It's such a beautiful color. It's a bit um, like tinted to orange, 
more orange, uh, like burnt, really burnt orange um, red. Um, it's super beautiful and I'm going to use it for a hack, like I said, I think the stitch definition, at least here on the skein, looks amazing. So I think this is going to be beautiful for cables and super excited to be, be using this. And it has the windmills on the etiquette. And those are the ones that um, Don Quixote tried to fight against in the book. So the uh, place where Wool Dreamer is the Mota del Cuervo is um, the Don Quixote country. So that's where the tales come, come from. And they also took me to see the, the windmills before I left home. So uh, those are of course not the original Don Quixote windmills, but um, later reproductions. But anyway, um, super nice to see them and the, the scenery from the windmills was beautiful. So definitely recommend a visit to Mota del Cuervo as well as Bull Dreamers if you're ever in this part of the world. But yeah, that's everything I had for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it and please remember to subscribe to my channel so you will always get a notification when a new video comes up. And the rest of the time here in Madrid I'm going to be enjoying the Love Yarn Festival, so I will keep you posted about that in my next episode. See you! Bye!